Welcome to Humans Behind Art. Today's guest is Maria Jacobs and she's a musician. And here's a small impression of her latest work. Before we dive into the interview, I want to remind you to subscribe to Cap de la Vie to always stay up to date on our new content. Also, we want to say a big thank you to all of our patrons on Patreon and your support that you're giving to us. Now, let's have Maria introduce herself. Hi. <laughs> I'm Maria Jacobs and um, I'm 21 years old. Tomorrow I turn 22. Woo. And yeah. And uh, I live in Spain, Catalonia, near the um, Tarragona area. And uh, my father is from Belgium and I started um, doing music when I was 13, uh, 12, more or less. And from there I, I started composing and I, I released my last album that's called Invisible. Nice. Um, <laughs> so we published the song uh, Balamunes from you. I hope I pronounced that roughly correctly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, more or less. Yeah. <laughs> um, and it's translated something along the lines of we dance together, correct? Yeah. Nice. Exactly. Um, tell us a little bit about what this song is about. Okay, this song, um, I wanted to, um, okay, I started composing during uh, quarantine on May, or more or less, and um, the aim of the song, the message behind it, is that I wanted to tell the world <laughs> that um, if we dance together, is like a metaphor, if uh, we dance together, then we would be stronger and um, people wouldn't have to be so sad, more or less. Eh? And especially during Christmas time, because uh, it's it's real that, that a lot of families have suffered for not being together and I wanted to give that hope uh, message. That's beautiful. Now, how was your Christmas actually? I mean, you just said as well, it was a bit of a strange Christmas this year for everybody and it was difficult to be with the family and uh, to get everybody together and have the celebration as usual. How was it for you this Christmas? I mean, both in a practical sense, but also in an emotional sense. How did it feel? Yeah, um, for Christmas Day, it was the same because uh, we are a little family. The other half is in Belgium, so we are always the same people and uh, my grandparents, my uncles, but, but we were the same. But the, what you said emotionally, it's it's quite sad because um, we go to visit, uh, I don't know, the places, we go to the beach, we go to Tarragona, we go to see the three wise men coming. And this year it was so difficult, not, not difficult, but um, I don't know how to say it, it was sad. <laughs> Because you have to stay home and it's your right to, to express Christmas as you want. And if you cannot do that, it was quite challenging. But but you managed in the end to find some community and togetherness as well, I guess, through publishing this song and hearing feedback from people as well. Was there something coming back from your listeners? Uh, yeah, because I did like a challenge um, where I I done merchandising for my concerts <laughs> and as there aren't any concerts then I have merchandising all over the house and I said that if uh, they publish the song doing uh, like an activity or something, if they were with their parents, they did a photo and they upload it on Insta and they put the song, then they were entering the contest to win a, a merchandising piece. And a lot of people actually uh, done that and it was uh, really nice because there were some people that were painting and they were uploading pictures of painting, the other ones dancing. There was everyone with their own talent, you know, and it's, it's really nice. Wow. So it was not just 
making a song but really creating a, a movement together as well and not just tell yeah, them the yeah. message <laughs> well in a way yes you you manage to get people active and to do something and i think that's very important and uh, goes much further than just a song yeah but it's quite difficult on these days to move people i think that people are becoming really sedentary and they are staying home watching tv and they are not active but but uh, emotionally they are not going further and saying okay let's listen to this new artist no they are saying okay i'm listening the same as always you know i don't know how to say it but i don't know if you understand <laughs> i think i do i think it gets clear that there is this people getting stuck in the usual but are not being active inside of what is happening right now and actively making something out of this situation that they are forcefully stuck in. Yeah, they are using the same old pattern. Yeah. Now, you didn't only make a song, but you also made a video. And mm -hmm. in that video, you're also working together with a lot of other people that are dancing and acting and doing things in your video. So how did all of this come together now, especially during those difficult uh, times, of course, at the moment? How did uh, yeah. all that happen? Um, it was um, quite challenging because there were a lot of children and a lot of parents were scared of the situation. And obviously I could not do the test um, before the video because I, I don't have the, my, I don't know, I don't have resources to do that. And uh, obviously during the rehearsals and everything, we had to wear a mask and they were dancing and they were sweating with the mask. <laughs> <It> was, no. <laughs> But but eventually it went really well. I um, they were really because sometimes it's really hard to work with children and and it was amazing. They were really good. I, I don't know if you've seen the video, but you can really see that they were expressing what they know and they were being I don't know happy. <laughs> and um, I don't know with um, with the cameras and everything that we done the video we done it with the family. I didn't like um, choose another external company, uh, but we done it ourselves. And my boyfriend was recording. My mom was giving food to the children. My, my sister was dressing them. <laughs> it was crazy, but really, really good, really good. Another experience. I think uh, it's it's visible in the video as well that that people were happy and uh, that were were enjoying very much. To, to do something together as well. Yeah, I think they miss that. Yes, for sure. And it's always nice if there is an opportunity to come together and do something and express together something. Especially then if there is this message behind of, okay, let's just dance together, let's enjoy this, let's do something together and express. So I think it was somewhat the perfect opportunity for that as well. So therefore, really nice. Um, you started already to talk a little bit about how all this shooting, etc., was organized with your whole family being behind the, the project and your mother giving out food and all those things. How, how was it to organize all of those things? How did you get in contact with all the children and their families to find the people to collaborate with? Um, I, I'm a teacher. Uh, oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm a teacher, a music teacher in a school near here. And my mom is a teacher in another school and my sister is a teacher. So <laughs> uh, we have a lot of children uh, coming and going. And we just had to ask, uh, do you fancy coming in a video clip? And they said yes or no. And then, uh, I, I don't know how to say it, but, but during the process, I was, a, um, I don't know, new ideas were coming to me. So from the beginning, I didn't have everything organized, you know? I started with one idea and then more children came in and I had to think of more ideas. And it was like, a, I don't know, like a progress but with the help with other people, because in the beginning, um, th there wasn't supposed to be a band, 
there was only supposed to be a singer, but then new children that were playing instruments said, can I go? And then, okay, <laughs> you can come to the stage, you know? <laughs> but So it started out as a very thought through idea of yours and then it became this yeah. big community thing in a way. Yeah, but everything ended like expected. It was, it's really strange because the, the dancer, the, the ballerina, Uh, had to be alone and then this this boy that was dancing I don't know break dance I don't know how the style um, he came and and I said okay would you like to to be in the video clip and it was perfect because they're the two contrast of new styles and I don't know <laughs> it's really good I think uh, why just looking at it from the outside I think you really managed to create a goal and a, a vision and something that everybody can stand behind so everybody wanted then to collaborate with it and because it's all in this one direction everything still comes very much together so <laughs> thank you <laughs> no i think it's great and it's uh, it's very beautiful and uh, we need more of this kind of works i think where there is the space to bring in yourself with your own talent like the other boy that was dancing for example or mm -hmm. the other people playing instruments and i think that's that's really great and it can really give a lot of value to our society as well and to overcome difficult moments like this right now yeah it's a pity that's in catalan and it's difficult to understand the lyrics but <laughs> But you also have a video on your own channel with the lyrics. So if somebody wants to look at it, <laughs> yeah. they can uh, go there and use Google Translate and all those things. So the resources are there for all the listeners of this interview, <laughs> if you want to know more. <laughs> um, now you're still very young, you're 21, soon to be 22. Um, yeah. But based on my research that I did about you as preparation for this interview, there is quite a lot of things that you've done actually and in quite good production um, settings as well. So how did you become this artist that you are today with this strong goal and mindset and as well talent to organize everything then in this high quality um, it's, <laughs> I, uh, it seems like a long way <laughs> because I started when I was so little I started with piano um, but I was really 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 shy in the beginning and I cried because my mom um, uh, set me up with uh, guitar lessons and I was really upset because I didn't want to sing and play the guitar in front of people And uh, then we, um, my, bef my best friend and I uh, started a group and um, there were singers there and I was playing the piano and, you know, others. And one day the singers uh, couldn't, couldn't attend the concert and I started doing like second voices and stuff, but I didn't want to be the main singer. I didn't like that. And one day, I don't know how, because I don't remember exactly, uh, We did like this, like like the step forward, and I and I had to sing, but mostly of obligation. And then I, I said, okay, it's not that bad, you know, I could get used to it. And um, from there, I I was um, started composing the first song called "Is It Me or Is It You." I started composing in English. It's it was easier for me. And um, I don't know. From there, I started my own songs. Uh, my own CD and then my own band and then my other CD and <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> One thing came to the next. Yeah, yeah. I, I never thought things through, you know. I never said, okay, I want to be this famous. No, I, I go with the flow, you know. <laughs> well, it seems to be working quite well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Now, you said earlier that you're... Uh, uh, mother is a teacher as well and are they also in the field of music or are you the only artist of the family so to say? Um, no, uh, my mom is an English teacher, my sister is uh, 
don't know. Uh, a little of everything because she's a French teacher, uh, English teacher, a teacher with, you know. And um, my sister with this band that I told you about in the beginning, she was playing the, the flute. And, but she, she was doing it only for the, okay, I come and play, you know. It's not like a passion that she had to play for herself. And when we finished the group, uh, she also stopped playing. So, yeah, I'm the only <laughs> musician. <laughs> oh. What was for you the step to to make being a musician, not just being a hobby, something that you learn in school because your parents sent you to music school? Where was the step for you and how did that happen that you said, okay, I want to do that as my job and make a living from that? I, I don't remember. Um, I started doing concerts when I was 15 or 16 um, and I think I think it started because people started seeing me because I, I started uploading videos on YouTube and said okay I would like this girl that sings on YouTube to sing live for my party you know or something like that and from there I started buying the, um, the material because I had to buy speakers and everything um, and from there, it, like I say, it's, it's not something that I was looking for, but something that came up from the universe. <laughs> and, uh, and I really appreciate it because uh, until now, I was doing like 150 concerts per year. It's, it's a lot. And um, this, yeah, this past year, it was only 30 or 20. But, <laughs> but normally, normally it's, it's really good. And I can, I can say it's my job to do that because I... I don't have to look for something else uh, to work, you know. Now, you mentioned earlier that in the beginning it was easier for you to compose in English compared to composing in Catalan. Uh, why, um, like in general, how do, you, how do you write and compose your songs? What is the process that you're having there? <laughs> Depending on the songs, uh, I started normally with the melody and because it's easy for me I don't like writing um, <laughs> it's something I have to do because it's part of the process but I, I really like composing melodies and I have tons of melodies that are in the cloud <laughs> and with no lyrics on it but um, I, I, I listen to country folk indie music and it was easier for me in English. And then I started doing like the step in Catalan because people here were saying, okay, I don't understand. Can you say in Catalan, please? And I said, okay, let's try it. But it's not the same. It's still not the same. Okay. Um, but so you still prefer to write in English? Yeah. <laughs> you don't look happy <laughs> saying that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but what songs are more successful actually, the, your, your English songs or your Catalan songs? Um, it depends, because the last one, it was my first single of the new CD, it was called Foolish, and a lot of Catalan people liked it, and I don't know, people here in Spain listen a lot of the style reggaeton, you know what's that? Yes. Yeah, okay, and that's awful, <laughs> and I will never do that. <laughs> I feel like young people are only listening to that and are not like um, helping new artists with new music. Um, but it's it's normal. They are young people and they are listening what makes them dance. But it's quite difficult to know this. But uh, I entered last year in a music label in here in Catalonia, and uh, they obliged me more or less to do Catalan music because it was their their crowd you know they, they they want to put the music in the radio but it has to be in catalan and i agreed to it so now from now on i will do everything in catalan okay mm. <laughs> <laughs> well i'm sure there there are still opportunities for you to produce music in english as well just not yeah. just through that label then yeah for sure i hope so <laughs> well if they don't allow you at all then you will find your ways, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, now, you mentioned reggaeton and other music styles already. Is the, 
the music that you listen to privately for yourself is that also the same kind of music that you are making yourself or is there a difference yeah i it's really different i listen to indie soft music um really really calm <laughs> and if not if i'm not in the mood i listen to electronic really powerful music <laughs> so <laughs> i'm like bipolar <laughs> But um, yeah, I would like to do, because with the CD, the aim was to do like uh, country music, but the producer said here in Spain, country music is not selling and um, you should do like more commercial pop and with some country there, but not, not you know, and uh, yeah, I would like to do some country, but it's, it's, it's true here in Spain. Um, when I do it when I'm 30, you know, I, I will do some, some country pop there, but it's not the same. It's not the same if I want to do concerts and, and stuff. But I think as well that in if you, in the music that you're making right now under this label as well, uh, if you have country influences inside of the music, I think yeah. you can slowly create your own audience of country music inside of um, the existence of the audience of the label. Yeah, but it's really difficult. If it's normally difficult with normal music, <laughs> imagine with a style that it's not listened. It's, it's, and yeah, there, it's something that I have on my mind for later, or I don't have a rush to follow my dreams. Uh, because I also like electronic music, so I I don't I don't care if I produce like country or, or electronic. I like both, and from now on I will go more more electronic. Yeah. You mentioned earlier that um, you in the the example of reggaeton music that it doesn't help the music. How did you how do you mean that? I mean that the lyrics, the style, I. I hate it. I mean, it's not something... Okay, I, I don't mean hate it, but if I go to a party, okay, it's okay. Because it's a style that makes you dance and, and I agree to it. But for the people who listen it at home, it's crazy. I, I can't imagine listening to, to that all the time. Dun, 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 dun. It's all the time the same. All the songs. So what is... Then, um, in your own making as an artist, what is the the goal that you have with your music? I think creating um, creating a special crowd that listens to me, and uh, that like a, a fan base that really comes to my concerts and sings all the songs. That would be the the greatest for me. It's really simple, actually. <laughs> Because when, when you have a crowd and an audience, you feel great and, and that's it. I, I don't need anything else. Now, right now, obviously, concerts aren't really an option. Yeah. So how is it right now for you with, without being able to do concerts and be a musician in, as you were before? Um, I, miss, I, I miss playing live, but... Um, it's I, I'm, I, I finished the physiotherapy degree and I'm also doing some some you know patients and, and stuff so I'm, I'm busy equally <laughs> I'm, I'm not doing plan A I'm doing plan B but um, I like both and I, I'm continuing singing at home and I, I want to start recording more videos for YouTube and yeah <laughs> adapting to the system. <laughs> How do you personally stand towards this trend right now of moving concerts and all of those things online? As it's a very, on the one hand yeah. side, okay, I understand. On the other hand, well, it's not really the same thing. What is your, your opinion to that? Yeah, um, I've done like three or four uh, concerts online and it's okay because once you have everything settled, uh, it's always the same. You don't have to move. You don't waste any more hours of mm, building up the material and everything. But uh, it's playing for yourself. And 
uh, yeah, it's like rehearsing. I, I don't I don't see it as a concert, but um, some town councils paid me for for doing some online festivity, okay, uh, as a concert, and. I think the money that the, the, the state gives it gives to the villages, if they can distribute uh, them to some, I don't know, some culture and some music, it's better online than nothing, you know, because otherwise they waste the money. So I prefer online than, than being here without doing anything. I see, I understand. Um, yeah. You started to mention money, but... Um... How much support is there in Catalonia from the side of the government for artists, not only musicians, but in general for the arts yeah. at the moment? Right now, I'm uh, autonoma. I don't know how to say that. Um, I... Independent, autonomous. Yeah, but I pay the taxes as an autonomous person. So as 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 my own my own firm. My own. So you're self-employed. Yeah, and I pay like um, I don't know, two hundred eighty-nine a month every every month, uh, plus other you know other stuff. And um, actually, they only give you if you apply um, one thousand euros, and as as an extra money, eh? as as a help, as a yeah. And um, for me, it's no problem actually because I live with my parents, and I don't have I, I have some some uh, how do you say waste uh, um, not gains but expenses ah yeah yeah <laughs> and uh, it's okay because it's money that I need because I have to pay for video clips for production but I I see. Uh, small businesses that they really have more difficulties and they are the same. They give everyone the same for self-employed, you know? So it's not really great the, here in Spain. I mean, I think it's in, in many countries like this at the moment and there is artists are struggling everywhere and not only artists but as well other forms of smaller businesses. Um, but do you see a way like because you are you've created this community in in this last um, project of yours with uh, Balemunes do you think that there is a way together with other artists to create an awareness for that and to create some sort of a unity between the artists to get the recognition that the arts deserves and needs in our society I find it really difficult because, um, first of all, artists are not doing, um, they don't have the same goal to start with and even if they had, people are in different levels. So I cannot unite with people higher than me because they have their own crew and everything. You know, I have to unite with people my own level and I don't know these people because I'm not known. You, you know what I mean? Yes, I understand. So, maybe we should do that, but someone sh should be in charge and, and say, okay, you come together and, and then it would be great. But I don't know if we would still achieve what we want. Well, it would be a beautiful wish. And uh, if that's possible, yeah. it would be amazing. So let's... Uh, yeah. Let's hope that people hear this and um, that something starts to happen. <laughs> exactly. They can contact you down there, it's the contact details. <laughs> um, now, you said already, okay, it's right now your life is more focused on the physiotherapy and um, less concerts, obviously. But do you think that this whole situation is influencing you as an artist in general? Not just how you deal with the situation right now, but afterwards. Yeah, yeah, because um, I'm. I don't want to quit doing music because it's a thing that I I really like and I really love. But I see that it's becoming more difficult than it was, and I don't know if people are willing to 
take this step and still fight for music. I don't, I don't know if you understand, but um, I'm, I'm a really practical person and if I see that music is so difficult that I can't live with that, uh, I will uh, do my other studies, you know? I'm not a stubborn person that says, okay, I have to be famous no matter what. No, I, I, I accept what life is giving to me and right now it's, it's what, what it is. And <laughs> I, now I'm, I'm starting uh, recording new singles and I'm still fighting for music because I really like it. Um, but I don't know from there in two years how will I be doing or nobody knows that, yeah. That's true. Um, so right now you're already busy creating new singles and new work. Um, how is it going yeah. there and um, what, uh, what is it about? <laughs> I cannot tell yet, but <laughs> uh, as I said, uh, we're not going through the country uh, folk path anymore. So I'm moving on to electronic style and it has to be in Catalan. So uh, maybe a single would be in English, but for now uh, it will be in Catalan. And um, I'm really looking forward because the, the label is really trusting, uh, tr trusting me and my product. So I think it will be a really good experience for me because it's something that I didn't do until now. And I really like challenges and this is, is quite good. <laughs> but I, I don't have anything um, fixed yet, so I cannot show you anything because I'm still working with the producer and writing new songs, so... Uh, but you also don't know then yet uh, when things will get public, I guess, right? Or is there yeah, a less. date? Or... I don't have... Tell me, tell me, sorry. Uh, or if there is like a date or, okay, in half a year or in this period of time it should go public and will be released. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have a deadline, <laughs> more or less, at um, April maximum there has to be my single out. Um, and I haven't really started working yet, so I have a lot of work. And um, from there I will, yeah, <laughs> yeah crazy and uh, from there I will like uh, upload a new single like every month or every two months so March April <laughs> I don't know the date we will check back in with you around that time maybe yeah. <laughs> yeah. check up what you've been up to nice um, now I didn't know this before that you are that you also studied uh, physiotherapist and I myself yeah. am a physical performer and dancer and acrobat. So wow. for me, I, uh, I'm always curious when I hear people doing very different things. So what was your motivation there to get into physiotherapy as it's so very different than compared to <laughs> yeah. music? Um, I consider myself a really active person and when I wanted to to know what to study, I said, okay, not office, not, you know, I was <laughs> discarding all, all the things that I, I wouldn't do. And then I was um, like thinking of medicine, but I said, okay, I, I don't like prescribing, um, um, uh, how do you say that, uh, pills, you know, I don't like saying, okay, you have to take this. Um, I prefer doing it myself and treat people. And then I said, okay, physiotherapy will be for me. I wanted to come uh, to England to do osteopathy during six years, but it was a private school, so it was too expensive. And I said, okay, I will start with a degree, and then when I finish, now I'm starting osteopathy on uh, October, and uh, it will be four more years, and then I would like to do Chinese medicine. So, I, <laughs> it's, it's, my life is, uh, yeah, but. I, I really l love this part of the science. I really think, and, and especially with you people, because uh, some injuries are really nice to treat, you know? <laughs> Not nice for you, but nice for us. And um, yeah, I, I would like to study more, understand the body as a concept. And What would be an injury that is nice to treat? I'm curious now. <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then let us know by clicking the like button below. 
If you want to see the full one hour long conversation that we had, then I want to invite you to become one of our Patreons and support Kaptala V. You gain early access to all of our videos, get to see the full interviews and get to see special behind the scenes clips from our Kaptala V original productions. Patreon is also the platform for our community where you can really engage with other viewers and artists as well as myself and the rest of the Kaptalavi team and really help shaping this community. If you have questions yourself that you would like to ask to our artists, then please just put them in the comment section below their videos and we will make sure to ask it to the artist in their interview. That being said, I hope you have a nice day and see you next time. We'll come with new videos every Friday and new interviews every Sunday.